So we finally get a UFC fight night with a crowd, not in the apex. And boy, did we get a crowd. UFC Mexico City this weekend. Anytime they go to Mexico, the crowds are crazy. Crazy, crazy. It's going to be packed for the prelims. Usually have good fights. They're loud. They're reactive. And, of course, the UFC filled the uh, the fight card with Mexican fighters. So they're going to be there. Uh, good main card. I think we have six fights on the main card. Is that correct? Yep, six fights. And, look, last year in Mexico, most Mexican fighters won. I just want to point that out now. I think four Mexican fighters on the main card won, two lost. Or one lost and one wasn't, you know, neither was Mexican. So just let's throw that out there. They kind of they kind of want the fighters to Something that win. keep in the back of your head. And let's start off with the first fight of the main card. We got Manuel El Loco Torres. That means crazy. The 14-2 and two Mexican fighter taking on Chris, the problem Duncan. That the means 11, he's a problem. The 11-1 and one, uh, Scottish fighter. Uh... Both guys 2-0 in the UFC. The difference is Torres has finished both of his fights, both TKO KOs. Chris Duncan won both by decision. Yeah, they've they've seen uh, kind of a little difference in career so far. You know, both, both haven't been beaten a bunch of times, but Torres has found just a crazy amount of finishes. You know, seven KOs, six subs. Three straight first-round finishes, five straight wins total for Torres. Now, Chris has only lost once, which is no problem at all. And he's won seven times by KO. But I'm thinking maybe Torres' ground game comes in and, you know, at least forces Duncan to question. You know, it, it, it forces something to become open. Maybe a leg kick, maybe a head kick, maybe a... Maybe a takedown. One interesting I saw things I saw was Torres. He has two losses in his career. Knee bar and heel hook. So both like those lower leg ones. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Duncan's that big of a threat to do that to Torres, but maybe just something to keep in the back of your head. But I kind of agree with you. I think Torres has more to his game than Duncan. I like Chris Duncan. I think he's a good fighter, but I think Manuel Torres stays undefeated. I think he may keep up not only his win streak, but I think he finishes or keeps up his uh, finish streak. Yeah, I agree. I do like Duncan. He has KO power. He's silenced, you know, or not silenced. He has good, has had some success on the ground. He's had some decent ground game in his career, but he strikes more often. I think if he's poised, it could work, but when facing UFC talent, he's 2 and 0 but both by decision. You know, Torres has already proven to be a finisher. I think Torres wins, like you said, by finish, probably KO. So we both agree on that one. Now let's move to the only woman fight of the night. Women's strawweight, Yasmin Yuregi versus Sam, Sam Page Hughes. This, she said, man. Yuregi's coming off of her first career loss, a 22nd KO. Denise Gomes, fight? yeah, that was, that was a crazy that one. Just folded her. That's Gomes Denise just Gomes the one with a neck her. tattoo. Yeah, and she rushed her and then yeah. called uh, her. That was a 22nd KO. She's 2-1 in the UFC. 10-1 overall. How's she going to respond to her first loss? It seems like they kind of gave her a little it's bit of a step weird. down in competition. Like, kind of like, here, get this win. Because she, she's only 24, and she has, a lot of, she has a lot of uh, promise. Right, yeah. Sam Hughes Get her confidence is, back. No, no, they do want to build her confidence for sure because she is definitely – well, let me say not definitely. At this point with what she's shown, she's more of a prospect than Sam Hughes. Sam Hughes is 3-4 and four in the UFC. She's faced a lot of, you know, adversity. She is coming off of a win, though. She can win. She is tough. I think she's going to have to go crazy to beat Yasmin here. Do like Denise Gomes did. Rush her. Try to get the knockout quick. Or maybe, you know, try to sneak a takedown, get catch her back, and just choke her out. I think Yuregi is going to be ready for it. I, I think she's going to respond well. I think the crowd's going to help her. Only 24 still. I think she bounces back. I think Yuregi, she might get the finish. She might finish Hughes. I, I agree. Seven KOs in Yuregi's career. Sam Page, she's been knocked out, man. Let's see it she happen. She has been knocked out. I think Yuregi, you're right. I think Yuregi gets the knockout finish so there that's two for two that we agree on next fight the young boy how is he this dude's still only 19 years old raul rosa jr look at his, the El year he was Nino born. problema that means the problem child the problem child taking on ricky Tur turkeikos tercios turkeios turkeios pretty. pretty pretty ricky that means he's cute 
He's 30 years old, so there's an 11 year ga- age gap. Uh, Raul Rosa, eight and one, two and one in the UFC. He had his first loss, and he came back and got a nice first round TKO, so he responded well. So that's good to see out of a young prospect. And he's never been finished. His loss was by decision. That's loss good. That's by important decision. to point out because it's easier to come back from that than it is from a, a brutal like sleeping knockout. Turkios twelve and three, also two and one in the UFC. All his fights, whether win or loss in the UFC, have been by decision. He is coming off of a split decision win, but it was all the way back in November of 2022. So he's taken quite a long time off. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. He hasn't been active for a while. He's had three fights since 2021, none in 2023. I think the problem child, El Nino Problemo, Raul Rosa, who was born in 2004. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. Is going to come out here and show him who's daddy. Think Raul Rosa is going to win. I agree. I think he moves to three and one in the UFC. Maybe gets a finish. I think that's crazy. He's only nineteen, but he's like starting to move up. If he gets this win, you know, yeah, like moving he, up he that ladder, getting, right into gets better and better competition. You just never know. I think the the big thing with Rosa Rosa is is he's young, but he's he knows that he's talented. You know, he knows that he's naturally gifted in the sport. And he's working for it. So he has room to grow, a lot of room to grow, but he's taking advantage of that. Yeah, I think that loss may end up being one of the best things for him, that early loss. Yeah, not going like 15-0 and 0 and just being cocky all his life. Yeah. Taking an L early, which he still went 8-0, but or 7-0. Taking an L, getting back on and just remembering what you got to do to get out there and win, that's, that's strong for him. All right, so the next fight, this may be the most action-packed, exciting fight of the night. We got Daniel Zhu Huber, Golden Boy, the Mexican, only 24 years old, 14-1, and 2-1 and one in the UFC, taking on Francisco Prado, the Argentine, only 21. He's 12-1 and one overall, 1-1 one and one in the UFC, coming off of a first-round win for Prado, a first-round knockout. Zell Huber's coming off two straight wins. Neither guy has lost a lot. Neither guy's ever been finished. Both guys are pretty well-rounded. I'm excited for this fight. Yeah. Zell Huber, I think, is going to lose here. But I do think it's going to be a very impressive fight. Fight. Prado, he's only been, out of his 13 career fights, only one has gone to the scorecards. And, and it was he lost his UFC debut, and he lost it. Right. And he came back and got a nice win. I think here, he lost that fight against Jamie Malarkey. Think about that. A vet. Somebody like Jamie Malarkey with that kind of power wasn't able to put Prado down. Prado also has uh, six submissions. Yeah, six KO, six submissions. So if you have a good ground game, he can battle that. I think Zell Huber here is not going to be exposed by any means, but I think they just are doubting Prado's ability. Vegas is doubting Prado's ability to come in here and finish the fight. I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, I think Prado wins too. I think think Zell Huber is going to be the only Mexican... Here's a little uh, spoiler for a head. The only Mexican to lose uh, in the main card. Oh, really? So I got Prado winning the fight. I agree. So you ready for the co-main? Co-main. Let's see it. So the co-main is a rematch of a fight that ended a little prematurely because of an injured shoulder. We got Yair Rodriguez, the 31-year-old, 19-4, and 10 wins, 3 losses, 1 no contest in the UFC, taking on Brian Ortega, 15 and 3 in one no contest. He's seven wins, three losses, one no contest. Ortega has lost two straight, lost three out of four. But as I said, one of those was against Yair, where in the first round his shoulder popped out. Right. And it counts as a win for Yair, counts as a loss for Brian. But who knows what would happen if that if that didn't happen. Right. Look, Yair lost to Volk at UFC 290 in July. That's crazy to think about, right? Yeah. Just that short amount of time. We're going up to 299. Um, You know, both fighters lost to Volk. Ortega, he recovered. You know, he's looking to to rebound, get, you know, get the rematch against Jair. I get it. He also lost to Volk, but at UFC 260. You see, that's crazy. Just, like, wild. They're just, everybody's there. I mean, both guys. That wasn't even long ago. Both guys have three losses in the UFC, and listen to him. Yeah, years three losses are to Volk, Holloway. Max Holloway, and Frankie Edgar when Frankie Edgar was, like, the man. Right. Ortega's three losses are to Volk, 
Max Holloway, <laughs> and then the injured one we talked about to Yair. So both these guys, I mean, Dogs. they beat everybody else. Even though I don't, look, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of Ortega. I gave him the respect he deserves. He's a dog. He choked me the fuck out. One big thing is Ortega, obviously, T-City, triangles are his main game choking you out. Yair's never been submitted. And he has ground game. And he has ground game. And another interesting thing for Ortega, listen to his last three, his last four fight dates, how big of a gap he's made. So his last one was July of 2022. Right. Before that, September of 2021. Okay. Before that, October of 2020. Then before that, December of 2018. So he's taken like, it's once a year, maybe. Yeah, eight, 12 to 18 months off at a time. So how's he going to respond? Since he's been doing that, I know a lot of it's been because of injuries and everything. He just hasn't been the same. But if you're if you're fighting through injuries, that just means you can't recover. Like, not fighting through injuries, I mean, but if you're getting his... injured and... You know, you're having trouble every time. You're just, you're a dim- you're a diminished fighter at Since that point. Since Max Holloway beat the shit out of him in December of 2018, CTE. he hasn't been the same. And I think Yair has been the more active fighter. He's been the more successful fighter. I think Yair not avenges because he won the first one, but kind of like makes it right. Like, no, this time I'm really going to beat you. I think Yair goes in there. I think he might finish, might get the knockout over T-City. I agree. I think uh, Yair is going to win. I think Ortega is a compromised fighter at this point. I agree. And I think Brian Ortega is going to be turned into CTE City. I see what you did there. But, um, so right, let's go to the main event. We got one fight left in the main event, as you said. Second fight on our next four year bender of fighting only the same guy. Yeah. Brandon Moreno versus Brandon Roy Val 2. This is going to be a good one. Um, Mer- Moreno has a knack for, uh, at least in the UFC, of really only fighting a couple people. Uh, Davidson Figueredo four times. Pantoja when, three. And they fought before in, in November 2020. Right. Which was a first round TKO by Moreno over uh, Roy Val. So I don't know why you would, you know, accept this fight again if you're Moreno, but let's go. One thing about Moreno, though. He can win anyway. He can submit you. As we said, he knocked Roy Val out. He can knock you out. He can beat you by scorecard. The only way you can beat him is by decision. He right. does not get finished. He's fought some killers in the UFC. Nobody can finish And him. he just stands up. Somehow his legs just work. I agree. He's, he's got great ground game. He's got a few KOs. He's like you said, only lost by the shit. And both decision. guys' last fight is a title fight loss to Pantosia. Roy Val in December, uh, Moreno in July. I got to say Moreno wins here, man. So, yeah, I mean, Roy Val has crazy cardio. Uh, his three, he's five and three in the UFC. Two losses to Pantosia, one to Moreno. I think he's about to move to five and four. With two losses to two guys. I think Moreno, I agree Isn't with that you. crazy? That is crazy. I mean, this division, this 125 division. They just I guess all, there's just nobody else. There's like six of them. And they all just fight each, they're all killers. Yeah. But they all just fight each other. But I agree with you. I think Moreno wins. Talk about weeding out the I think the Moreno chumps. is one of those guys, like, he loses and you're like, oh, his career is going to fall off. And, like, he just won't go anywhere. Yeah, he'll be, like, number I, seven in the division forever. I'm not going to be surprised if, like, within the year Moreno fights Pantoja again. Or... Or, just hear me out, Brandon Moreno versus Brandon Royval 3. In <laughs> I like, mean, if Royval wins this In, fight? like, October. No, 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 I'm saying even if Moreno goes 2-0, and oh, like, in October, if, he, if Moreno wins by decision, he's going to be like, no, I have to be respectful and beat him by submission as well. So one last thing before we end this uh, preview is this the first time we've ever agreed on every single fight? It's close. I don't know if it's good or bad, but I guess we'll see. 